Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And this episode is about do you become smaller or a bigger person in the face of challenging seasons? And just to, you know, be real here, we're all about being human. To give you an idea of our life right now, because we're going to share about our life throughout today's episode, I have spit up on my shirt (laughs) from our baby a little bit. She doesn't do it often, but I literally don't look great right now. (laughs) Um, Aaron is about to head out to this real estate property flip that we told you guys. Like I have every day for going on four weeks, sometimes 12 hours a day. I am starving. I haven't eaten. It's like I have a job. And he wasn't supposed to do that. That was again, a project and investment uh, that went off track with the person that was supposed to be managing it. But anyway, our life is not looking perfect right now. I mean, it never does, but this is relevant. Let's be more straight. Mm -hmm. It has been, as you've heard us say, the most challenging season, at least for Mm -hmm. me personally. I think where you've been at is slightly different, very supportive. And as the title of this episode, you've really helped me slash us step into being bigger rather than smaller. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Mm -hmm. We're not saying it hasn't been perfect. It's been freaking challenging. Yeah, that's true. And And the main thing about this is, did it have us become smaller or bigger. Yeah. And this morning we had cacao, drank cacao, which is a a whole other conversation, but we absolutely love it. We meditated before she woke up. So we got up at 5 a.m. because that's how devoted we are to the internal work. And after we both had some quiet time, we ended up having a great long, like hour long conversation together talking about just the things we're going to discuss today about how are we each handling this season and, and perspective. And so anyway, challenges. Aaron, do you want it? Because this is powerful what you... Well, I mean, I just think the first thing is it's not a question of if you face challenges in your own life, which is inside of the context of your marriage, obviously. And one of the goals, if you have been following us along at all, is that you have the tools to face these challenges. It's inevitable. You're going to have these challenges. But do you have the tools, number one, to face them as a team and not let challenges create conflict or disconnection or have it be something that puts you against each other. Mm -hmm. That's the worst feeling is when you're not only facing challenges in life, but now you are against each other or both of you are just in a disempowered place. And so we had this honest conversation. I think we had mentioned it before, Mm -hmm. but I think it's worth going into again where you were really you were really in it, right? You were really having a <laughs> I'm hard not day even with like it. All out of it. Mm-hmm. Let's say I want to come back to that point because I think in the challenge you go kind of feels as if it's in and out. Yes, it's not like oh, I'm in this challenge and I've sort of chosen to be bigger mm-hmm. in a sense, and then you just maintain that bigness. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you go <laughs> you go down again. But yeah. So you were having a hard day. Yeah. And we were debriefing the day, and I said to you you know, something along the lines of you are letting yourself become smaller Mm -hmm. rather than bigger in the face of this. And I was saying that to you, but also it's something I could take on for myself too, because it's been challenging. Yes, because of that situation, but also I'm still really adjusting to parenting right now and just managing business and parenting and us and some other life decisions that we're trying to make right now. Well, you could Mm -hmm. even maybe even mention for yourself, you have been having like physical body manifestations, mm-hmm. which you are learning is coming from uh, identity conflict, right? Mm-hmm. So that that's a place for you oh, where yeah. that's been a challenge. Yeah, healing since birth has been kind of an on and off thing. Like there's been times where I feel great and then there's been other physical symptoms, specifically for me, some digestive stuff. I now have like a great plan, working with a naturopath, feeling so much healing. Uh, but yeah, my body definitely was... like kind of showing the signs of me really battling. I know that's a strong word, but battling to integrate these new roles and the way our Mm. life is different. And my body is really sensitive. Like it really shows if I'm going through things emotionally or mentally. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, even healing has been a big part of our life lately, but let's go back to the bigger or smaller Aaron. Like let's define that a little bit more for people. Since you brought it up to me, Mm -hmm. this was like a week, maybe two weeks ago Mm -hmm. now. So I guess from your perspective, why don't you share from your experience how I was letting it 
make me smaller? How Mm -hmm. did you experience that? How did you see that within me? Yeah. So when I say get smaller, some other words to describe it would mean like shrinking down, almost like I saw you become so disempowered that you were almost like just almost physically getting smaller. Like I could even see your shoulders slumping. I could see your body language was, you know, like you were really disempowered. So physically I saw getting smaller, but also you were almost as, as if you just had no power, like the energy was it. So it felt like you were stuck. It felt as though you were paralyzed, um, almost, almost like a weakened part of you. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't be vulnerable and have hard emotions, right? Like there were days, I mean, you were crying, right? Like to be many, honest many about many it. Times. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like when we go through challenges, you can have all the human emotions going on. But when I say smaller, there is like a staying stuck in it. And like, I have no power here. I have no control here. Whereas getting bigger is, yes, I'm having all the human emotions. I am really feeling it. This isn't my ideal situation. However, I'm going to rise to the occasion. I am going to get resourceful. I'm going to look at what I can do. And you definitely switched after that. I mean, from there, your action totally changed. You uh, called on friends for help. Mm. You know, you said, hey, like, I need help on this. You made moves. You like, were like, boom, you need to do this, this. You got more um, assertive and in action mm-hmm. as opposed to paralyzed, right? And, and you did mindset work. And you were focusing on, you know, just how you were thinking about things. And you even talked to people. You talked to your guy friends about, here's how hard this is on me. And I think that's a big distinction, too, between when we get smaller, we can even hide from people. Mm. Oh, yeah. Whereas when we get bigger, we can call on people for the right people, right? Not people you're gossiping to and, like, who will just affirm oh, that's terrible, right? But who will be like, okay, let's shift this for you. Let's let's help you through this. So that's a big way I would distinguish it as well. And for me, if I can share, is facing similar, like my things, right, around health um, and, and navigating this new role as being a parent and in, in addition to everything else we have going on, when I was getting smaller, I was, it was kind of a victim mentality, And I was as if I, again, power is like, I don't have any power over this. And I thought... Decision um, or control. Yeah, I was going to stay stuck in it. Woe is me. Whereas when I got bigger, I was like, no, I am healing this. I am done with this. Like I made a decision, an internal decision. Then I got resourceful. I got, I got my naturopath to do some testing with me. You put up those like quotes and like posters. Around. Yeah, I have quotes about healing all around. I mean, I just really changed my way of being and my energy when I got bigger. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think I want to be honest about this. It's not necessarily like the path to becoming bigger is that you do make that decision and then you don't have those feelings of frustration Mm -hmm. or drain or like your life energy is is being taken away. I just think it's not to the same level. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that because as honest as I can be, that Wednesday night going into that Thursday and Friday, I I completely transformed my attitude and my actions did change. Mm -hmm. And then like on Saturday, it was like the day sucked again. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, I I felt not like I went totally backwards, but like it wasn't great, Mm -hmm. right? I'm still in the challenge. I want to be honest about that piece. I don't think it's, and I was talking to my friend that's, that's helping us out. He had a huge thing happen to him a few years ago. And he said, yeah, it's just not like, you make that decision to get bigger and then you're just on a straight upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. It's that you're going to go up and down, but your attitude about it has changed. Mm -hmm. And maybe you don't slump as far down or you... You don't stay stuck as long. You don't stay stuck as long. You kind of pick it up a little bit quicker. So that's kind of the feeling. That's what I wanted to 
translate here to you listening, it's not just a one thing. You don't mm-hmm. just make the one decision and then now you're all of a sudden bigger. The path of becoming a bigger person has these kind of mm-hmm. these uh, valleys and peaks. Yes. And even to link this to like you two as a couple, because that's another dynamic is you may be in different spaces. Like your partner could be really struggling and you could be doing mm-hmm. okay. And, you know, this challenging season might be about your marriage. You know, we are working with several couples right now who are really in it and they are like their marriage is we are either getting in action and and transforming this thing or we're headed down a path of separation now that's not all the couples we're working with but some are there and so my point is it it could be that the challenge is actually within your partnership what I want to say and I had a powerful conversation with one of the the females within the couple we talked to a lot of the individuals when we work with couples ongoingly and so I was having a phone catch up with her and I could sense a a bit of judgment that she was in a way judging how her partner was handling Mm. a stressor. And for them, it was actually a financial thing going on right now. And in a way, it was like making him wrong. And she was kind of backing off because he wasn't giving what she wanted. You know, like I'm not getting what I want from the relationship because he's focused on this. And what I said was, you know, he's obviously going through a big challenge right now. Why don't you also get bigger and support oh. your partner in becoming bigger? Like, mm. why would you shrink mm. be- because your partner is going through something and therefore maybe not showing up the best, you know, maybe not giving you everything you want and need in the relationship. Mm. And I'm like, that's a recipe for disaster is, is like they're going through it. Now you're going through it. So instead I said, why don't you show up? Like get bigger and support your partner through this challenge and then see what that does and how that flips Mm. things around too. That's a great point. Way to bring it into the relationship Mm -hmm. because the challenge that your partner is going through might be the challenge for the other partner. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. I wanted to go into something that sounds very simple though about, so we've been using the word challenge obviously. Now I've been thinking about this. So this isn't like I'm saying this as a fact. But I think it's possible going through all this. What I'm realizing is that a challenge might be a time of change. Mm -hmm. I mean, just sit with that for a minute. Like whenever you're experiencing a challenge, it's just a change to how you're used to your life, how you're used to yourself, your partner. And then if that's the case, the biggest problem with that then is when change seems to be happening to you mm-hmm. when you didn't choose it. Yeah. Okay, so challenge equals change. And the, and the hardest thing is when you feel like you're being almost forced into a change that you're not then choosing for yourself. That's, so true. That's really kind of how I've been feeling about this. So then where does that take me? Well, if challenges change, maybe you speak to like, what do you, how do you confront how do you deal with change when you don't feel like you stepped up and say oh i'm I'm looking for change and like i'm wanting this right so you talk to that in a second but then what i wanted to say is the thing that really started to help me was if challenges change also change is the constant of life Mm. Mm -hmm. you've probably heard this in different contexts that like the only constant but the only truth actually is change Mm -hmm. so when you think about that you you can't necessarily resist the change because that is really what life is yeah and i think that brought me to a certain acceptance of dealing with a change that i personally didn't feel like i was choosing Mm -hmm. but change is really what we are here for I love that so much, and I hope that that's resonating with everyone listening. And I think within the relationship, too, what we find with a lot of couples is they're focused on what they don't want to be happening, right? Or when they're in that season of change, which feels challenging, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I don't want this, meaning I don't want this financial stress. I don't want these arguments with my partner. I don't want to feel like I have no time for myself because I'm parenting someone right now. Or I didn't choose this 
behavioral challenge with my child. Exactly. And so couples can stay really focused on what they don't want rather than kind of focusing the conversations on what they do want and then what they can do to create that. So actually, before we go further into this, I think this is a perfect time to mention you and I have been really loving with couples, helping them clarify more of what they do want Mm -hmm. and, and finding out the areas that aren't in alignment and their relationship and in their life and helping them overcome kind of what feels like these barriers between them. I mean, there was a couple that signed up for coaching with us yesterday and they've been trying this to figure it out for years. So we actually wanted to offer today to do for three couples, so there's only a, f- a few spots here, for three couples to take the relationship assessment that we have couples go through. Four million couples have taken it over 40 years. It is so, so powerful to do and really get clarity on where you are as a couple. And then do a call with us to go over your assessment results. And couples will say, man, this was really clarifying. Even one hour you know, with you guys looking at the assessment gave us so much clarity, so much focus on where we can get resourceful and where we can both get better as a couple. So if you want to get one of those three spots, it's only $147 to do that. That's way discounted than what really it could be. So for three couples, either email us at connect at newpowercouples.com or send a text to 602 321 five, six, five, two. And those will also be in the show notes. So grab one of those three spots whenever we have offered them, they go really quickly. So don't wait on that. But let's go back to this topic of overcoming these challenges, seeing how you can handle the change better. Well, I think where I want to insert this term growth Mm -hmm. is probably at this point. And you also hear if you listen to personal development type podcasts or content that, oh, growth is the best thing. Or you might even hear that your soul came here for evolution, for for growth. And so it can be put into a context of like, oh, growth is great. Growth feels good. And I just want to be honest about this here, though growth is necessary. Why? Because change is always happening. So you can't even fight against that. If life is change, then that means your two options are really are you grow or it's not even like you decay. It's like everything around you is going to be changing. So really what is your option? Like if you stay stagnant and you have it make you smaller, you can just see how that is just going to diminish your experience of life, your life energy, your, your feeling of exuberance of peace of momentum. Like it's all just going to be diminished. So there's really no other options, but in the moments you might not really be loving that you're growing. I just want to be honest about that. <laughs> it's not I think always a lot painless. of people are like, yay, just focus that you're growing. And sometimes it's like, I don't want to grow. This is really challenging. And it's like knowing that this is leading to growth isn't necessarily going to be the thing that changes your experience. Mm-hmm. So growth is just necessary because change is going to happen. I think for me, that was just a better way to kind of accept the challenge or the change. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't trying to reach for like, oh, I should feel good about growth. Yeah. It's, I mean, growing pains. If you think about even growing up, I remember, (laughs) I remember those bone pains. Do you like, I remember the bones being like, wow, that's really achy. Mm. So yeah, in a way growth as human beings and growth within the marriage isn't without some discomfort. Mm -hmm. And I think as human beings, it's about embracing that more. And instead of focusing on, oh, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. I don't want to feel, and going, oh, okay, well, where is this actually helping me? Where are we focusing forward? You know, what is this helping us clarify? We do want Mm -hmm. and embracing that discomfort and being able to talk about it. And that's why I'm so glad we had this conversation together this morning because, you know, we're able to share the hard feelings. Like you need to talk about them. You need to embrace them instead of just pretending you're fine. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of the things that can block growth is not talking about the human experience going through it. Mm -hmm. So maybe give some examples after I say this, but so all that being said, what starts to happen in the moments, and it's not like one shift, but as you go through a challenge, as this change is happening, you're starting to focus on what you do want. What that looks like is maybe a new path in life. Mm. Or like we talked about with emotional agility, 
you start to define what it is that you value. You heard from a great friend, actually, you were voice memoing, that certainly as parents, your values change. Mm -hmm. And you have to be open to, oh, maybe I do value different things. Mm -hmm. But that challenge and that change or that emotion is your guidance, your signal to determine what your new values are, as well as just new experiences, new direction in life. And so, again, because I've been in it so much, these things are not happening like, right away necessarily so i've I've been in this three weeks Mm -hmm. and yes i do feel better i feel more optimistic but this path of a couple of weeks is having us have these conversations for what is our our next path what what is it we do value especially around with sky or with family uh, also with with being with groups of people and we don't have an answer yet Mm -hmm. i just think that's the one thing i wanted to leave off we don't have a clear answer we're clearly on the path Mm -hmm. to more clarity and I think you settle into, okay, I don't have an answer, and but that's also okay. So you start to feel, again, a little bit better than being smaller. Mm-hmm. You're not at the a- absolute growth yet, mm-hmm. but knowing you're on the path and that you are getting this clarity is a part of it. Well, I think you said it perfectly. I mean, just to give examples, but you, you really described mm. that well. We are good at, I think you and I, even when we are in challenges, to ask better questions. So we are really asking questions of how can we create even more alignment in our life? How can we create even more harmony? You know, do we live in the right place? That's something we're asking ourselves right now. So we're like based on our family and and moving forward and who we are and who we're becoming. Is Arizona the right place? Um, Or is it being in you know, in Ohio with family. I mean, we're just really having these conversations. Hey, what pivots and shifts do we want to make in our business to create even more harmony? Hey, what other income streams do we even want to pursue? Um, And so that's something we're really good at is focusing forward and focusing on it clarifying what we do want. So for you guys listening in your life and your marriage, how can you today talk about what we've said about, hey, what is this showing us that we do want? about, hey, how can we actually embrace and become bigger people in this challenge, whether that challenge is within your marriage or that challenge is outside circumstances that's impacting both of you? How can we become bigger instead of smaller and really getting resourceful that way and getting empowered, right? That's why it's called the Empowered Couples Podcast. And knowing that change is is constant and change is a part of the challenge to embrace it, to not resist it, because that's actually going to just prolong the pain. So with mm. that, we really hope that this was clarifying for you. We hope that you resonate and that it gives you a shift in perspective, no matter what you're going through as a couple. And send us a note if it does resonate. We love hearing from you guys on Instagram. And then make sure you take advantage of one of those three spots before they are gone. It's first come, first serve. So again, you can email us at connect at newpowercouples.com or text 602-321-5652. Can't wait to have you take that relationship assessment and do the call with us. With that, we love you guys and we will talk to you on the next episode.